All right, so for this game, this one is a bit of an irregular game. Um, at its core, it's not too far away from what we usually do. We have just a sequencing setup with seven positions. But in addition to the elements that we're going to have to plug into this, um, which there's only two types of, um, we also have to worry about these, these cleanings. But before we get into that, so in terms of the loads, so we have essentially mulch, of which we have three, and we have stone, of which we have four, which of course conveniently adds up to the seven loads that will be carried. Um, and yeah, in addition, we have to worry about cleanings. And the way that cleanings work in this game is that every time we switch from one cargo to another type of cargo, um, there's a cleaning there. So if we switch, for example, from mulch to stone to mulch, and then let's say there's mulch in five, and then stone in six, then you would have to have a cleaning here, a cleaning there, a cleaning here, and here and maybe here. Well, I guess not because this would be stone as well. Um, so basically every time you flip from one to the other, there's a cleaning. Now in terms of how to symbolize that, we can always just put some sort of dot in between things in order to indicate a cleaning. But really you can also just visually recognize that every time that there's a switch, you're gonna have a cleaning. Um, now in terms of the rules, there's not much to work with, but essentially we just have a, the, the bigger rule here is that we have a limitation on the cleaning. So the first rule tells us that the cargo bed cannot have more than three cleanings. So we're maxed out at three cleanings. And we are told that five is going to be mulch. So we can plug that right into the board. Now, for a lot of these games in which there's kind of this irregularity, there's something a bit different about the game, um, it's always worth taking a few moments to really get a good understanding of how the, the game is going to work, the mechanics that drive the game. Um, and basically in this game, it's a good idea to explore how we can work with the cleanings. So for example, I mean, we already have mulch in five and we have two more mulches to work with. So let's kind of consider what might be possible or what might not be possible. Now, for example, if we ran all the mulches together, that seems like it should be much more doable. What would happen? So if we did, let's say mulch in three, four, and five, well, you would have stone going into this. So you would have a cleaning in between two and three, and then you would have another cleaning between five and six as you go back from mulch to stone. So that would be two cleanings and that's easy enough, right? That's easily within our limitation of cleanings. Um, could we do better than that? And arguably we could. We could drop one of the cleanings if we push our mulches towards the edges. So if we ran something like five, six, and seven, then we could get away with just one cleaning, right? You could have all of the stone here, you'll have one cleaning there, and then all of the mulch. Now, let's go the other way. Could we separate the mulches out? And you'll notice that that starts getting limiting really fast. So for example, if we separate the mulches into two sets of mulch, so we would have a two and a one somewhere. So for example, if we have a mulch in two and we have a mulch in three, you'll notice that this doesn't work because you'll have to clean between one and two, you'll have to then clean between three and four, and then again between four and five, that's already three cleanings, and then again between five and six, that's four cleanings, which means we wouldn't be able to separate it out the mulches that way. And when I say that way, um, we could do a little bit better by doing the same thing we did a moment ago, by pushing up the mulches against the edge. So we wouldn't be able to have the mulches separated if the mulches are kind of in the middle of the board. But if we put, let's say, one of the sets of mulches against the edge, so for example, if we did mulch in one and two, then we, we lose one cleaning. Then we, we just have to have a cleaning between two and three, that's one, another cleaning between four and five, that's two, and another cleaning between five and six, that's three. That works. So we could arguably separate out the mulches, but only in a very specific way. That is to say, only if one of the mulches or sets of mulches is pushed up against one of the edges. If they are floating in the middle, that would never work. The only way to have the mulches floating in the middle is to have them all together. And that's kind of an important mechanic that's kind of that drives this game. So from here, let's take a look at the questions. Number 13, which of the following is a pair of load that could both be 
mulch. So we don't have our standard exclusion question. Uh, we just have a global question. But as usual, we do the first question first. So answer choice A, could we have one and three be mulch? And you'll notice that that's definitely not going to work because that separates all of the mulches to apart, right? And we said at best, we can only separate the mulches into groups, um, into two groups of mulches. So answer choice A would not work. B, can we do mulches in two and three? And no, similar issue, two and three would have them floating in the middle. We can't separate them unless we have one of those sets against the edges. So B is not going to work. C, two and three, six. Can we have mulches in two and six? Same problem, because if you put a mulch here and you put a mulch here, they're not up against the edges and they're separated, so that's going to be too many cleanings. Answer choice D. Can we do three and six? Same problem once again. Um, we would be separating the mulches with nobody against the edge, so that would be too many cleanings. Can we do four and six? And yeah, that one's easy, right? Four and six would have them all together, and that we can definitely do. That would only have two cleanings, one over here, one over there, and that is certainly consistent. The best answer here is answer choice E for question number 13. From there, I suppose let's take a look at the local. So question number 15 is our first local question, which says, if the third load is mulch, so if we have M in number three, and of course we already have M in number five, well, we said that the only way that we can separate the mulches is if one of the sets of mulch is against the edges. But right now, there's no way to do that. There's no way to get one of the sets of mulches against the edges unless you separate all three into individuals, which we can't really do. So in order for this to work, the only way that we can make this work is by having all of the mulches together. We're not going to be able to separate them against the edges. So we're going to have to have the other M in four, and then all of the others will be stone. The question asks which of the following must be true. Let's take a look. A, six is different from seven. Nope, they're both the same. Next, one is different from two. Nope, they're both the same. Answer choice C, seven is mulch. Nope, it is stone. Answer choice D, six is mulch. Nope, it is stone. E, the first load is stone. And yes, it is. The best answer to question number 15 is E. Next, question number 16. If we have exactly two cleanings, so if we only have two cleanings in this particular scenario, well, we know number five is, is mulch. Well, if you remember back to what we said, um, if we separated out the mulches, even if we had one of those mulch sets against the edges, that would still push you to three cleanings. The only real way to limit yourself to only two cleanings is to essentially have all of the mulches together. Uh, moreover, though, it would not be in 5, 6, and 7. That would be impossible um, because if we do 5, 6, and 7, that actually drops you to just one cleaning over here. So if we have two cleanings, it's not going to be 5, 6, 7, but we are going to have to keep all of the mulches together, which means if it's not 5, 6, 7, 7 is definitely going to be a mulch. If all the mulches are, to are together, they're definitely not going to reach 1 or 2. The only way we can make this work is essentially three, four, and five, or four, five, and six. In fact, furthermore, um, no matter which way you go, four is definitely going to be mulch. The only ambiguity is whether the other mulch is going to swing into three or whether it's going to swing into six. So from there, let's take a look. The question asks, what now must be true? A, the second load is stone. Hey, there we go. The second load is, in fact, stone. The best answer to question 16 is answer choice A. For the record, let's just take a quick look at the other ones. Three is mulch. Now, it could be, but it doesn't have to be. Answer choice C, three is stone. Again, that could still go either way. D, six is mulch. Same thing, that could go either way. And E, seven is mulch. And no, that's just dead wrong because seven is stone. So once again, the best answer to question 16 was A. Next, number 17. If no more than two loads of the same material are hauled consecutively. So, ooh, okay, so for this question, we're basically not allowed to have three in a row. We're maxed out to only two in a row. So first of all, if we can only have two in a row, and this applies to both mulch and stone, that means that we're not going to have triple mulches. We're not going to have them all together. So we're going to have to separate out the mulches. And we did mention earlier that if we separate the mulches, 
one of the sets of mulches is going to have to push up against the edges. So we're going to have to have a mulch either in one or in seven. Now, actually, wait, seven wouldn't really work because if we have any of the, if we have a mulch in number seven, you could potentially have, let's say, another mulch in number four, but that would still leave you with three stones in a row. That doesn't work. If we cannot have three in a row, the other mulch, we're going to have to throw in some mulches over here, essentially, which means it's going to be one. It's going to have to be a mulch in the first position. Now, from there, can we do more? Well, the other mulch, actually, look at it this way. These guys cannot all be stone. We can't have three stones in a row, which means we're going to need a mulch to break up the stones over here. And that's going to be your third mulch, which means there's no mulches here. These are both going to be stone and six and seven. And really, the, the only way this can work is we still need to keep the mulches somewhat together, right? We need a set of two. So one of the mulches is going to go either here or there, and then the others are going to be stone. So three for sure is going to be stone. And then it's just a question of whether two or four it could go either way. So the question now asks, what could be true? One is stone, and that certainly cannot. Four is stone, and that actually that could be true, right? That could go either way. And all we're being asked for is what could be true. So maybe let's hold on to B just in case. C, the third is mulch, and no, that's currently stone. Answer choice D, the sixth is mulch, and no, that's currently stone. E, the seventh is mulch, and no, that's currently stone. The best answer to question number 17 is answer choice B. Next, back to the singular global question that we had. Which of the following must be true? Let's take a look. Answer choice A, number two is stone. And no, because in this scenario, we could have had this be mulch, right? So that doesn't have to be true. Answer choice B, one and two are the same. And no, that also doesn't have to be true because this could be mulch while this could have been stone and the other mulch could have gone there. So that also does not have to be true. Um, answer choice C, the second and third are different. Do two and three have to be? Well, no, because we did just say that this could have been stone. So two and three could have been the same. So that doesn't have to be true. At least two mulches are consecutive. Do we have to have? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we definitely have to have at least two loads of mulch consecutive because that was kind of the limit of how much we could separate the mulches, right? There was no way to do more separation than that because then that would have been too many switches. So the best answer to question number 14 is D.